Our occlusion integrator for RenderMan RIS mode is a smoking fast way to get uh, ambient occlusion into your scene. You don't have to apply any material attributes to your scene. Uh, you can just go in here and hit the occlusion on the integrator level and you can see just really fast occlusion and you know this will go up to 2000 samples or so uh, whatever you want to make it uh, but at first it's going to interactively do it really fast so great way to check out occlusion in your scene now we've got a much easier method to install our integrator now before it was a little bit more complex with a lot of uh, script ha hacking so with the latest update we've just put out um, when you unzip your zip file you'll get this lollipop shaders folder and there'll be an install.txt there'll be a screenshot which shows you exactly where it's going to be installed so inside your renderman globals you've got the integrator in the menu right here you just choose lollipop shaders and then you can choose occlusion like we'll see in a second but if you look at the install text let's just go through those steps really quickly to help you install this because it's a lot easier now um, so basically there's about three steps and you just restart Maya. So what you want to do is just place this lollipop shaders directory wherever you want it. So you can just put it anywhere on your hard drive. Doesn't matter. I've put it here. You can see it's lollipop shaders. I've got it under LS integrator, but you can just put that anywhere. So that's it. Step one. Uh, now you want to move the lollipop shaders dot module to your Maya modules directory. And if it doesn't exist, you can create it. So let's go see how I've done that. I've got a bookmark for it. So go I, I go into Maya. And here you can see I'm on OS X and here's my full path. Library, Preferences, Autodesk, Maya. So that's where it's going to be if, I, if you're on OS X. And as we mentioned here, that's where it's located. Uh, if you're using Windows or Linux, it's going to be in a different directory. But just go into your uh, Maya preferences on Windows that'll be probably under my documents. So I've got a number of different versions in Maya here but in this one we're going to take a look at it in 2014 but the same thing goes for 2016. You can see there's a modules path. Right now we're running in 2014. It works in both. Uh, if I click under modules I can see that there's a RenderMan for Maya module. That's the RenderMan Studio plugin that puts it in here. But I can also see a lollipop shaders dot module and that's what we moved from the install. So if we go back here, this is the uh, install directory and it ships with it. So just take that. You can command C, cut and paste it. We'll go back to our Maya modules and just drop it in there. Now if we open this up, what does that look like? And it's very simple. It just has this one line plus lollipop shaders 1.0 that's already in there so all you have to do is modify this path to wherever you put that lollipop shaders directory wherever you unzipped it remember step one we said you could place it anywhere so just change that to your full path here's mine and that's it you've moved this into your maya modules directory you've given it that path so now every time you launch maya what happens is it looks in here because it's got this RenderMan Studio, but it also looks in here and it just sets some environment variables up. Um, so as soon as Maya runs with RenderMan, it's going to point to this directory where the actual integrator sits. So we've done step three and then we just restart Maya and it'll automatically go in here. And you'll notice the scripts directory inside um, your Olipop shaders directory. Well, there's a bunch of stuff in here, but you don't have to touch that because we've modified it for you. And the beauty of that module install, it automatically looks in here and it checks this file and it checks this file. And we've modified those just to make sure that your integrator loads in RenderMan Studio. So now let's go into Maya. And if we stop the render, we were just rendering in the background there. Get some really nice, like how nice high quality while I was chatting away to you. Uh, I was rendering in the background and that's just a really nice, really nice occlusion there. <laughs> so uh, let's go into our RenderMan control. So I'm going to click this button. And when it pops up under sampling or IPR sampling under the integrator, by default, it's the path tracer. We have our VCM, which is our bi-directional path tracer. But if you go into lollipop shaders it now appears in our menu and the occlusion one is in here 
and on IPR sampling, I had the occlusion one in here. That's how I was rendering this, but it shows up in that menu. So that's the whole point of installing it is that it needs to load up in this menu in my on render man studio. And then once you switch to it and you hit render, we're going to do an IPR render or an offline render. It's going to render in this mode because I'm under the IPR sampling tab. And if we go back, it's going to kick off another render again. And, uh, that's the beauty of, um, that integrator and you can switch back to the path tracer if you want and that's the uh unidirectional path tracer that ships with render man so if we switch back to that you know we get our we get our usual render uh, but if we switch it back to this one now we're into occlusion again and we get our really cool occlusion renders so give that a try let us know if you have any questions at info at lollipopshaders.com but a lot easier to install now uh, with this Maya module approach.